Um, Peter was one of a generation that was truly lost in the heights of the AIDS um, epidemic. And many of the people who knew Peter are probably no longer with us as well. We're very fortunate to have someone who has known Peter, has worked with him, and was a good friend of his, and who has come today to talk to us. Karen Jackson, who was a nurse at Einstein and worked with Peter and became a close friend. Oh, I have to stand. I don't know if I can do this standing. Okay. okay. First, I want to thank all of you for inviting me. I'm very proud to represent him and his family. <coughs> I can do this, but I first met Peter in February of 1986 when I joined the emergency room staff at Albert Einstein. At that time, Pete was the chief medical resident, but soon graduated and became an attending physician in the ER. We worked very closely together and soon became the best of friends outside of work as well. Outside work, he and I joined a bowling league. We didn't do so, I didn't do so well at first, and he'd say, I have a few beers, and you'll do better. <laughs> and I would, but then if I had a few more, it went back. But we actually came in second, but did not join the league the next year. Instead, after a trip to see his parents' square dance in New York, we joined a square dancing club called the Independent Squares here in Philadelphia. I'm not sure if it still exists or not. We danced all over the country. It was a hoot. He also recruited me as a volunteer for the Philadelphia Community for Health Alternatives on the John Locke Committee, alongside of him, dispersing money to people in need who were living with HIV. At work, Peter was loved by everyone. He was kind and compassionate and possessed a wonderful sense of humor. The nurses would complain or question him why he wanted them to do something that they didn't want to do. He would kiddingly say, because I'm the doctor and you're the nurse. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when he left Einstein to, to start his private practice, the nurses gave him a t-shirt with that quote printed on it. <laughs> Peter was passionate about his work and cared for all his patients in the same, the same way, regardless of race, religion, culture, or sexual orientation. He adopted a quote written by Dr. Edward Trudeau to cure sometimes, to relieve often, and to comfort always. And that is exactly how he practiced medicine. When he went into private practice, his patients were predominantly HIV positive, and he cared for them with that same compassion. As Peter neared the end of his life, his main concern was who would care for his patients. He was also a dedicated son, brother, uncle, and friend, and is dearly missed by all. Peter was saddened that he would not get to see his nieces and nephews grow. I have main, remained very close with his family, and they too are also very kind and compassionate individuals. I'm sure he is very proud of the men and women that his nieces and nephews have become. Let me say in closing, I have been a nurse for over 30 years, and to date, I have never met a more loving, compassionate, and humane doctor or human being for that matter. Peter and I, oh, excuse me, and I'm, not, I'm definitely not the only person that feels that way. After Peter's death, the medical community at Albert Einstein developed an award that is given out annually to the graduating medical resident who best exemplifies the wonderful physician that Peter was. To Peter, my dearest friend and soulmate, I love you and miss you and look forward to meeting you again.